Welcome to the next episode of Real Estate Ramblings. Today, I'm gonna to talk all about reducing your stress through a real estate transaction. So I don't know if you've noticed this, but if you ever ask someone, what are some of the most stressful experiences that you have gone through in your life? Many times they will tell you when I bought or sold a home or when I had to move. So I hate that. I hate that buying and selling a home is known to be a tough, emotionally wearing experience. But I believe that there are things that you can do, some steps that you can take to make it a little less stressful and a little more enjoyable, right? Because it's a great day. It's a great day when you are handed the keys to your next home, or maybe when you've said goodbye to a home that was special to you, but you're moving on to the next step in your life. These are good things. So I want you to enjoy the transaction. So here are the steps that you should take to do that. Number one would be to save money. Many times people don't realize how expensive it is to buy or sell a home, but especially to buy a home. So there are some costs that you will need to take care of before you even get to the closing table. And those would be your inspection, your appraisal, um, your prepaids, like paying for your homeowner's insurance upfront. So remember, it's best to have more money than you actually expect to use because you never know what can happen. Number two, ask friends and family about their experience. Ask them, how did it go for them? And then the most important thing to ask is, is there anything that they would do differently if they went back? Is there something that they could change that would have maybe made it a more enjoyable experience, something that they learned? Number three, manage expectations. So turn off HGTV, and I love HGTV, but turn it off, stop watching House Hunters because the actual real life experience is completely different. I promise you, we're probably gonna look at more than three houses. So um, turn all that off, maybe start watching something different, and ask your agent what to expect for the timeline ask them you know tell them you don't really know what's going on right because many times we have our vision um, our expectations of what is supposed to happen but what we have seen play out on television or in a movie so make sure that you understand what the real life timeline of a real estate transaction looks like before you stick the sign in the yard or before you start looking for homes so number four control emotions so i've talked about this a lot before but i have found that in almost every real estate deal i have worked emotions creep in and they kind of make things a little bit more difficult. And remember, this is a business deal, right? It's just a business transaction. It shouldn't be emotional, but oftentimes it is. And um, that's okay, right? Because we fall in love with homes. We want it. We walk in and we envision ourselves celebrating holidays around the fireplace, right? So I get it, but it's really important that you understand that, that you understand that your emotions, <coughs> excuse me, your emotions can come in, they can creep in and they can muddy the waters a little bit. And the last point I want to make about controlling your emotions is that I feel like many times when we say control your emotions, people just have this negative connotation of a hysterical person, somebody that's just crazy and they're crying and they're really, really flustered. But remember, anger is also an emotion too. And that is something that I have seen with clients occasionally. They get angry about what the other side is asking for. Maybe they have sent this crazy, like, just ridiculous nitpicky list of things that they want to be fixed at the house on an on a repair amendment but it's best to not let your anger uh, get the best of you in that situation just roll your eyes maybe be mad for five minutes and figure out what your next step is going to be because your emotions can um, make negotiations 
a bit more difficult and maybe they can make negotiations not only more difficult but you might not be in the right head you know you might not be in the right headspace the right mindset when you are telling your realtor hey i want you to tell them we're not going to do this we're not going to do any of this like you get what i'm saying so it, it really does affect your mental state so control your emotions number i think this is five do your research so do your research in advance, not just the night before you go look at houses, but start reading online. Look at houses on Zillow and Trulia, then read articles about buying or selling a home in your state. It's important that you have some understanding of what the process looks like. But as I say this, this leads me to my next point. Trust your realtor. Just because you do your research, does not mean that you know more than your realtor does. I think a lot of times people, and I've not experienced this before, but a lot of times people think just because they have scoured realtor.com for three days in a row, like a long weekend, and they've really looked at the houses in their neighborhood and where they're wanting to move to, that they have a better understanding and a larger knowledge base than their agent does. <coughs> Sorry, but I promise you, you don't. So trust your realtor. They're the ones that went to school for this. They're the ones that have their real estate license. And I think that's it for my list. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope this list was helpful for you. If you have a real estate question, I would love to be the person to answer it for you. Um, also, I have to say this, but if you like the video, please leave me a thumbs up. <coughs> Excuse me again. Please leave me a thumbs up. Please like, please share, please leave a comment below. Maybe there is some point that I missed. Um, I would love to know what that is. So leave the comment below. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see y'all next time. Bye.